Let's bring in Jason Furman, professor at Harvard Kennedy School and former Council of Economic Advisers. Uh, Jason, great, great to see you. I mean, clearly uh, a very encouraging print, but are you in any way worried or still surprised that the participation rate remains low? Yeah, so definitely an encouraging print. We also got upward revision for the last two months, the unemployment rate much lower than I would have thought. But absolutely, the biggest and most surprising and vexing problem in our economy right now is how low labor force participation is. Uh, there are millions of people still on the side. Do you, th do you, feel, like, uh, do do you feel like we're going to get to a point fairly soon where the Fed will feel the, the, uh, the jobs part of its mandate is, is met or, and or whether inflation will run away from it such that it acts regardless? Yeah, I mean, this certainly validates the substantial further progress and the tapering. And they're not going to regret the announcement they made on Wednesday. But yeah, we saw really strong wage growth in this report, but it's nominal wage growth. I think we're going to see really strong price growth when we get the CPI report later this month. I think that we may not be able to get back to 3.5 percent unemployment without having a lot of inflation along the way. So they're probably going to need to act sooner. Um, than they think on rates. Yeah, my, that was my question, Jason, on wages and, and just how much further they have to rise. Because if you have this these record high amount of job openings and the labor force participation rate kind of stuck at these lower levels, how do wages come down with, with those ingredients? Yeah, I mean, normally when you see an unemployment rate like this, you expect to see slow wage growth. It's very strange to see fast wage growth at a time of still elevated unemployment. That's what tells us that the problem is labor supply. People not wanting to work. When labor supply shifts in, uh, wages go up. Um, what will change that? People being more confident about COVID, um, people running down some of the cash balances they have, a certain amount of time. What we don't know is how much of a permanent shift there's been, how many people are not going to leave retirement um, how many people have given up entirely. Uh, my guess is we'll get back, but that it'll take some time. Uh, are we at the point yet, Jason, where inflation is hurting Americans more than stimulus is helping them? I think so. You see, this past year, uh, prices have risen more than wages, and so workers have fallen further behind where they were before. You know, it's more important um, at this point, we want to get jobs and we want to get those jobs back. We'd like to see those jobs pay better. I don't know that inflation is helping either of those goals be achieved. So are, are you saying the Fed should be acting sooner on rate hikes? The message we got from Powell this week, Jason, was that they're going to be patient on, on interest rate hikes and the stock market party went on. Yeah, look, in August, uh, Chair Powell was pretty convinced inflation was going to stay low. This week, he was more uncertain. I think uncertain is right. I'm uncertain, too. They can certainly afford to wait to look at a couple months more data. But if the data is what I think it is, and we continue to see no moderation of inflation, then absolutely, um, they should hike. They should hike more than once um, next year. But it's fine for them to wait for more data to make that 